okay examination of external nose uh, so first of all you have to look in the external nose you have to look for any external deformities and skin changes for example uh, any hump any deviation uh, a saddle saddle means a broken uh, nasal septum or a nasal bridge in a crooked nose uh, where the uh, nose does not follow a straight line straight vertical line along the central of the face okay now examination of the interior of the nose or the nasal vestibule this is by lifting the tip of nose using the thumb you have to look for any furuncle furuncle means any boil of the hair follicles erythema erythema is a skin redness fissuring of the skin and skin of vestibule uh, these are abrasions in the skin of the vestibule and caudal dislocation dislocation uh, in the caudal part which is the anterior tip of the uh, nasal septum okay now the palpation part you have to palpate the nose with the help of your thumb and index finger uh, which is applied on each side of the nose you have to look for the mobility thickness fluctuation temperature pain and tenderness see on uh, all these features uh, this is uh, show some pathology and uh, on deep palpation when you press a little more with a high pressure uh, with a little more pressure you have if there is any crepitus crepitus is a grating sensation uh, usually due to rubbing of another one structure with another so that friction raises a grating sensation or any tenderness tenderness means pain uh, it is elicited in a nasal bone fracture now examination of the nasal cavity the first one is the cold spatula test what you do here is use places uh, cold spatula or a tongue depressor in front of the anterior nasal you ask the patient to expire uh, when the patient expires uh, uh, there will be fog formation in the cold spatula you observe the symmetry of the uh, fog formed if any uh, the fog formed in any one side is uh, less compared to the other side it means there is some obstruction in that nasal that part of the nasal cavity and anterior rhinoscopy anterior rhinoscopy here uh, using uh, instruments like pilchers or thudikam nasal speculum you actually open the uh, nasal vestibule and you look for uh, structures inside them so what are the structures seen in anterior rhinoscopy they are uh, the nasal septum anterior part of the inferior turbinate inferior meatus middle turbinate middle meatus floor of the nasal cavity uh, just look at the figure uh, you can see uh, the middle nasal concave concave and the turbinate are the same things uh, all else is given in the figure this figure is a good one uh, okay the posterior rhinoscopy it's done using a posterior rhinoscopy mirror and you see the structures in the posterior part of the nasal cavity uh, the structures seen are covana posterior end of the septum posterior end of middle and the inferior turbinates eustachian tube orifice fossa of rosenmuller this fossa of rosenmuller lies just behind the eustachian tube opening okay now probing probing what is probing you insert a blunt probe into the nasal cavity through the nasal vestibule and uh, you check for uh, any mass or malignancy uh, or there if you find one you actually touch it you look for its mobility you look for its consistency you look if it is sensitive to touch now why do you look for it if it is sensitive to touch because uh, malignant tumors or malignant masses are generally sensitive to touch also they bleed these malignant masses generally show a bleeding tendency while on touching or uh, moving them unlike polyps is the nose okay that's it uh, then examination of the paramenasal sciences you look for any in the inspection part you look for any swelling or skin changes over the paranasal sciences uh, also the uh, next is you look for any intercanthal widening see and uh, it is usually seen in ethmoidal lesions like if there is a ethmoidal polyposis uh, etc now you look for uh, the orbit for any lid edema conjunctival congestion proptosis visual acuity etc see 
while you do the posterior and the anterior rhinoscopy uh, through the different meatuses if there is any pus discharge you understand since we know uh, which all sinuses drains into which all meatuses uh, you can actually figure out which nasal sinus and which nasal parasinus has any infection or pus inside them okay now the palpation part in the palpation part you elicit sinus tenderness uh, what is a sinus uh, you actually palp in the maxillary sinus tenderness you palpate the can over the canine fossa avoiding the infraorbital now in the frontal sinus tenderness you over the floor of the frontal sinus above the medial canthus ethmoidal sinus tenderness on the medial wall of the orbit just posterior to the root of nose now the trans illumination test just to uh, detect if there is any pus mass or any thickness or a whatever in the paranasal sinuses this test is not used nowadays because it's just a quantity no it's a just a qualitative test you do, do not know the extent of something okay so in a dark room you make the patient sit uh, you uh, put a high beam light if you are checking for maxillary sinus you put a high beam light in the mouth and ask the patient to close his lips and you look for any uh, you look for the glow on the uh, on the maxillary sinus above the maxillary sinus on the uh, skin uh, if there is a bi um, um, bilateral uniform glow then there is no problem but if there is any decrease in the glow uh, that means the patient has some mucosal or pus correction in the sinus uh, similarly you check for uh, the frontal sinus uh, trans illumination by applying the light at the floor of the frontal sinus and the light glow is observed over the anterior wall of the frontal sinus this is compared with that of the opposite side i will show you a figure so the first was a figure uh, this one actually is the figure of maxillary sinus uh, trans illumination test and this is is what is you see is the frontal sinus trans illumination test now the postural test that's not that important the middle meatus is observed for appearance of discharge in various head positions now special examination there are six special examination the first one is endoscopy endoscopy you put a endoscope into the nasal cavity before you put a nasal uh, endoscope into the nasal cavity you have to actually anesthetize the patient you have to give a local anesthetic in the case of adults and a systemic anesthetic in the case of children the reason being uh, if there is any stimulation there is a chance of sneezing and it, it may injure the patient's meatus etc so to avoid all those things you have to give local anesthetic usually silocaine or lignocaine Uh, you actually uh, the use of uh, this endoscopy uh, over uh, anterior rhinoscopy or posterior rhinoscopy is that you can visualize structures that cannot be visualized using this anterior or posterior rhinoscopy like the superior meatus or the middle meatus they are not completely visible in anterior and posterior rhinoscopy also you can check for any uh, site of bleeding or uh, in the epistasis or any osteomeatal complex diseases now the nasopharyngeal examination under anesthesia now this is not important because most of the hospitals do have the endoscopy so this is only done when is there there is no endoscopy available okay then third test is you test for the smell actually you give some clove tea powder or anything to just uh, you actually uh, make the patient to smell uh, with the two nasal cavities separately don't give irritant substances so as to prevent the stimulation of fifth cranial nerve now allergic test uh, they are all of only theoretical significance you don't do all this in, in the lab okay there are there are in vivo test like skin test and the nasal challenge test there are in vitro test you just need to by heart the names of this just for the university exams now rhino manometry even this can be uh, actually assessed but uh, this is a pg level so we won't discuss it here now so and the radiology of nose and the paranasal sciences uh, there are different views uh, to see the different sciences the water's view cadwell's view lateral view 
and base skull view. Uh, so I will show you the figure. Uh, in the Walters view, you have to see that you can see frontal and maxillary sinus. And in the Cadaver's view, you see frontal sinus, nasal cavity, and the orbit. So here is the frontal sinus. This is what you see is the frontal sinus. Now, where is the maxillary sinus? Yes, this is the maxillary sinus. Okay. So this is Walters view or the occipital mental view. Or uh, now we have come to Cadwell's view. What is this Cadwell's view? We see the frontal sinus over here. We see the nasal septum. We see the ethmoid sinus, and that's it. Now in the lateral view, you actually see a sphenoid sinus over here. Uh, you see the maxillary sinus, ethmoid sinus. You can see here, and this is the frontal sinus in the lateral. View. And uh, actually, you see, look for any adenoids in the lateral sinus. Now, in this basal skull view, you can see the sphenoid sinus and also the ethmoid layer cells just above the hard palate x ray indentations. Thank you.